Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, validate binary tree nodes. We're given n binary tree nodes numbered from zero to n minus one, but that's not necessarily their value, but the value is pretty much irrelevant in this problem because it's not like a binary search tree, it's just a regular binary tree. We're also given two arrays, left child and right child. So each of these arrays is gonna be the same length as the number of nodes in the tree, because suppose that these are our arrays in index zero, we're saying that the zeroth node has a left child of one and a right child of two. In the first position here, we're saying that the first node has a left child of negative one and a right child also of negative one. Now, negative one is a replacement for null in this problem because we know the nodes are numbered from zero to n minus one. So if we have a negative one here, we can basically assume that this node, node one, does not have a left child or a right child. The second node has a left child of three and a right child of negative one. And the third node has a left child of negative one, so no left child and a right child also of negative one. Now, what we wanna determine is do all of these n nodes form exactly one valid binary tree? We have to use all of these nodes and they have to form exactly one valid binary tree. Now, what is a valid binary tree? Well, there are uh, two main characteristics here. First, that it has to be connected, a single connected graph. Just by looking at this one, we can see that it indeed is connected. And the second thing is that there can be no cycle in the graph. So here we see that there is no cycle. Now, it's a little bit tricky because trees are technically undirected. And I think the definition of a tree is kind of weird the way it's presented because obviously this edge is not undirected. It is going from the parent to the child. But basically, if you assume that this is an undirected graph, like what if I introduce a, an edge going from here to here? Uh, still, this does not have any cycles if we assume the edges are directed. But if we assume the edges are undirected, then this definitely does have a cycle, and this is definitely not a tree. So we would want to return false for this example. So that's kind of how we are going to determine if this is a valid binary tree or not. First, it has to be connected. And how do you think we're going to determine if it's connected? Well, probably we will start at the root because we're gonna run some traversal on this. Let's say DFS, you could probably also do BFS if you wanted to, but we're gonna run a traversal. Now, we don't know, like starting from a leaf node, we're definitely not gonna be able to reach all of the nodes in the graph, but we know theoretically, if it's a valid tree, starting from the root, we definitely should be able to reach every single node. So that's one way for us to determine if this is a connected graph. Now, at the same time, why not also determine if there are no cycles in the graph. How would we do that though? Because it might be a little different with a tree rather than a regular graph, right? Well, actually it's not. By starting at the root, we can keep track of which nodes have already been visited. We visited the zero. Okay, now we get to one. We visited the one. We get to two. We visited the two. Then we get to three. We visited this guy as well. So in doing this and keeping track of the visited, not only can we determine if there's a cycle, because if we were to, like if there were an edge from here to this guy here, then we would end up visiting this one twice. We would detect it's already in the visit hash set. That's what we usually use for DFS to determine if there's a cycle. And if that were the case, then we know there is a cycle. But in this example, there's no cycle. But at the same time, we can use this visit hash set to determine if the graph is connected. Because theoretically, by the end of the DFS, the length of this hash set should be the same size as the number of nodes that were given. So that's how we can determine that. So basically, we're just gonna run a DFS starting from the root. Now, how do we determine where the root is in this graph? Well, basically, we're going to figure that out by finding the node that does not have any incoming edges. So here you can see 
that this has an incoming edge, this has an incoming edge, this has an incoming edge, but this one does not have a parent. So that's where we would consider our root. That's where we're going to start the DFS from. Theoretically, what if there were actually multiple nodes that don't have a parent? Well, our DFS would then tell us that that graph is not connected. So we would end up figuring that out anyway. And in terms of time complexity, since we're running a DFS and we're going to have to determine where the root is, we are going to have a time complexity of big O of N, because N is the number of nodes, we know we'll have at most uh, two edges for every single node, and the space complexity is also going to be big O of N for our visit hash set and a couple other sets I'm going to show you in a bit. Okay, now let's code this up. Okay, so the first thing I'm actually going to do, and we can get away with this in Python, it's pretty easy, we're going to take the two arrays and actually add them together. Remember, these represent children. And if we add all of these together and I use a hash set to get rid of the duplicates, I convert these arrays concatenated together into a hash set, then we get rid of the duplicates. So these are all of the children. These are all of the nodes that have a parent, has parent, that's what I'm going to call it. And theoretically, we should be able to tell if the length of has parent is equal to n, then every node has a parent, and then we can just return false. We don't even need to do anything. We don't have a root node, of course, if every node has a parent. But there's one little thing you might forget about. We have some negative ones, potentially, in these two arrays. So before we check this, let's actually remove negative one from here. So I'm going to do it has parent. Instead of doing remove, I'm actually going to do discard, because remove will throw an error if this key does not exist. But discard won't throw an error. This does not have to exist, but if it does exist, it will be removed from the hash set. So that's just step one. Now we know there is at least one root in the tree, and we're going to initialize the root as negative one just as a default value, but now we're going to figure out what exactly is the root node. And we can't actually iterate over has parent. We're going to instead iterate over the range of valid nodes, which is from 0 to n minus 1. And we know at least one of these does not exist in has parent. So if i is not in has parent, then we're going to set the root equal to that, and we're going to break out of the loop. So by the end of this, we will have our root node. Now the only thing left for us to do is run our DFS. I'm going to define that as a recursive algorithm here. Before I do that, I'm going to declare a hash set up above that's going to be used within this function. And we know that with DFS, there's typically a base case when we reach null. But since we have numbers instead, what is null represented by? Well, it's going to be i is equal to negative 1. And if it's equal to negative one, we return true. We're returning true because we know that this is a valid tree, so far at least, because the other case is going to be where we detect the same node twice. What if i is already in our visit hash set? In that case, we immediately know we don't have a tree, so we will return false in this case. That's why we're actually returning a Boolean in this case. We have to. Now, if this node is not visited, then let's go ahead and add it to the visit hash set. And then let's do our DFS. Let's do DFS from the left child. How do we get that? Well, that's the easy part. That's why we have our left child array, the left child of I. Let's run DFS there. Let's also run DFS on the right child at this index. But remember, we are returning a Boolean. So how can we use these two functions to return a Boolean? What, how do we know if this is a valid tree or not? Well, basically, the left uh, tree, the left subtree has to be valid and the right subtree has to be valid. So actually, let's return the and of these two. So now our DFS will tell us starting at this node, is this a valid tree or not? But it doesn't. The one thing it doesn't tell us is, are all of these nodes connected? It could be a valid tree, but what if we didn't visit all n of the nodes? So for that, what we're going to do here is we're going to call DFS because we have to. We're going to start at the root, but we're not going to just return the result of this. We're going to return this and is the length of visit equal to n. So this is the solution that will tell us if there's no cycles and all of the nodes are connected. So this is the entire code. Let's run it to make sure that it works. 
And as you can see on the left, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, please like, and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.